Hey guys, it's Rocco here and welcome to another Lunar Classic podcast. I usually make a weekly LUNC content where I share with you everything that's happening with the Lunar Classic ecosystem, including a price prediction and technical analysis. I also do these spaces with LL69. I started doing these spaces when Lunar Classic was created after the Lunar UST crash. I still do these spaces. I bring on guests from the Lunar Classic ecosystem. So for today's episode, we've got Alban, who talks about the order book that he's creating on Luna Classic. We've got Rexy talking about the Terra Casino meme coin burn. It's Cat with her. If you've been following myself, we're trying to start like a Luna Classic meme coin season similar to Solana. We've got Juris Protocol. We talk about the solid proof. So we've got gold standard from solid proof audit. So we talk about what's been happening with Juris. We talk about USDC repeg. And we also have Stratcos, who is one of the technical developers for Luna Classic Chain. So we talk about tax to gas and also a governance and direction, future direction for Luna Classic. So I hope you enjoy this video, guys. Just a quick message to start the podcast. I'll leave a message at the end of the uh, video as well. So I hope you enjoy this podcast if you want to listen to it whilst in your car or you're driving, uh, you're working out in the gym or even working from home through your headphones. I will still making the weekly content as well. So make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the podcast. Podcast and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck, guys. Luna Classic, Bitcoin, the key updates from the week. Uh, then we'll bring on some guests. So we'll talk about the order book um, that Elbon uh, posted earlier. So I'm really interested about that. If Redland can join, we can talk about some of the repeg stuff. And then we'll do a bit of a debrief from the spaces that we had with uh, Solid Proof. I thought it went really well. We got asked some really good questions. From my point of view, I think it opened my eyes a bit from um thinking about whales and trying to onboard um institutions and, and working with like companies so so some really good um things for us to consider in the future um l 69 joined how's it going mate it's going great rocco i'm uh, recovering from yesterday's party um uh, i didn't have hangover lots of people thought i would have uh drank a lot but some for some reason i didn't so i'm fit and keen to um be on your spaces and uh, talk to Elban because I'm super bullish on their order book um, decks. I don't know if you can call it a decks. I guess so. Uh, order books are my one of my favorite applications uh, right after landing. So I'm super glad that they built it for us. Um, I'm super excited to have Redline um, be able to test our market making strategies on that. Um, and I'm super excited to later review some alpha because I've been in a meeting for the past two hours. That's why I'm late. Apologies. Um, so yeah, um, that's it from my side. It all sounds good. Um, yeah, we'll bring on David later later as well. Um, I've got your DM, <laughs> Lunatic. Redline, how's it going? Oh, hey, how's it going, man? Can you hear me? Or... Yes, yes, we can. Good to have you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Um, everything's gone fine with me. I've just been kind of um, working on strategies still with the uh, Joris for the market making. And um, as far as you know, Action was going to take a look at the connector for us. So we may look at getting it connected to Elbon's order book, actually. I don't know if you saw, but they actually have an on chain order book. Yes, I think we're all hyped for that. No pressure, Elbon, when we bring you on in probably next 10, 15 minutes. It's okay, so let's get started with. Um, uh, Bitcoin this week. So, Ken, I don't think there's much to talk about. Um, the market's been quite sideways. We had a sell off uh, start of the week last week, um, went down to around 60K. We've bounced up now. Um, I think we're just going to see very choppy markets. I don't think we'll break below 60K. Um, we'll see what happens with the election. I think until then, we'll, we'll chop or maybe get a spike down. But there's not too much in wider crypto i must say there's some law stuff with xrp um lots of projects still um um cooking or we're going to share some alpha most projects are updating stuff like that um meme coins there seems to be um cat alpha so um pop cat on solana has been going crazy i sold it too early um but apart from that there's not too much i'm aware in the crypto world redline jurist um anything to share from a news point of view from wider crypto i 
I can share anything, to be honest. Uh, I, I can share some, uh, <laughs> I, um, I don't know, there's some stuff going on in the Middle East, so I don't know if, if uh, crypto is affected, probably going to be volatile, but I didn't follow anything crypto specific over the past two days because uh, I had my free day with my girlfriend, who's now on holidays. Next week, I have lots of time to work, but I didn't really check anything in the past one and a half, two days. So maybe it's up to Redline to add something. Sorry, I'm just actually doing it and making copies. I'm going to pop it in and out. Um, if I'm honest, I'm kind of on the fence with a lot of with crypto at the moment. I've kind of, I'd say, 25 to 30% sitting there in cash, uh, just waiting on dips, just because I'm not sure what way it's going to go at the moment, being honest with you. And I think anyone that says they, they know for sure can't really tell either. Um, in terms of the, if, if the Iran Israel, <laughs> I don't know if that's just going to keep blowing over the same as it has been for months and months. And I, I think you usually when you see like you see a lot of terrorist organizations use crypto, like Hezbollah and that, they will use crypto and that will have an effect on markets. But like generally, they're getting squeezed squeezed out from using those services. So I, I can't see it having a major effect on the store. Being honest with you, unless it gets unless it blows over into World War Three, like. Yeah, I try to stay away from the drama because I don't want to get political on a crypto space. But um, yeah, uh, I think if it gets worse, we'll have a big sell-off. Um, if if um, Israel does attack nuclear sites in Iran, um, but I don't think I can. I don't want to share my opinion on that. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. To be fair, I see like Twitter crypto uh, Twitter traders like become war experts now, like writing threads on Middle East and what's happening. Uh, I try to stay away from that. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm um, same as you guys, just like I've got a keen interest because I've got a friend uh, whose family um, lives in there. So I think I get a bit closer insights than maybe some people. But yeah, I don't know much. So yeah, let's probably move on. There is risk on that. I guess people are worried about it if it gets worse, but there's not much we can say. Um, in terms of Luna Classic, uh, start of the week, we had that burn um, from Binance, which is great. But like we went into a lot of detail last spaces that just burning coins, especially like dormant wallets, doesn't help much in the short term. It's the buyback and burns that pushes the price up. So it's great that we've got their support, but we need to see more, whether it's Jewish protocol, Elvans protocol, the USCC repeg stuff um, or another project. Um, or even like meme coin madness like we've seen in Solana. Um, we need something else than just the burns. Um, there's the posts from Strat on tax to gas. Uh, maybe Lunatic and Redline can elaborate on the technical stuff. From a business point of view, what I understand is Genuine Labs did the code, but there's few issues with fees that we can't resolve. And um, Orbit Labs with Frag and Strat's help is going to try and take it forward. Um, I need to reply to Strat because you were saying that people haven't um, given him feedback on his Medium article, which is in a lot of detail, and I'm sure he's put in a lot of work. But I think the issue is lots of people don't understand all the details to give him feedback. Um, um, I'm not a technical guy, and I'm assuming most of the Lunar, Lunar Classic community don't understand all the details to give him feedback but yeah i guess um red line uh, lunatic can you guys um, add anything to that oh you haven't actually had a chance to read that medium article yet so i'm, I'm not fully up to speed from what i'm aware is, is the issue is it's about who's going to end up paying the fees is that correct rather than the con like so on one hand you would have the user paying the fees whereas on the other hand you'd have a contract paying the fees I think that was the issue. Yes. Is yeah. it, am I correct on that? Or? Yes, I believe so. I mean, I've messaged Frag. If he joins, he'll be able to elaborate. Um, but I believe that's the issue. Um, yeah. Like, as long as, for me, as long as, like, a user isn't going to be paying multiples of what they would normally be paying with a transaction, then I don't really see an issue with it. But again, I, I need to read his proposal. I, I haven't, or his Medium article, I haven't read it in detail yet. So I'd be probably better able to comment on it afterwards. Cool. Yeah, if, if Frag joins and uh, if you had read it, probably be able to explain it in a bit more detail. But I guess my message is that, um, yeah, I think if everyone supports what Strat and um, Frag's doing, it's just because of people's understanding of the technical details, they're probably not um, being able to give feedback. 
but that was another big news. Um, there's not not much to say on the repeg stuff. I believe the white paper will be launched first of November. I had a DM from Leonardo from the ceramic team, I believe. Um, so when once that comes out, I'm sure Redline maybe I'll have a chat with you to get ask you questions about it and maybe host the spaces. Have you had a chance to look into that Redline? Um, yeah, like, like so far they haven't released anything more than what they had initially done. Um, so there, like, there was, for me, it definitely seems like the best way for us to go forward at the moment. It's, you know, it'll be safe in terms of we'd never have a death spiral again. We'd be fully backed. Um, we'd be Micah compliant. You know, like, like for me, I think a big thing about, uh, say, being collateralized or over collateralized is if we keep, say, 50% of our supply in USDC, um, or yeah, it has to be USDC, say, Circle, they keep, I think, one for one. Um, dollars in the bank account and euros in the bank account for their stable for their stable say and um, so to be mica compliant you just have to have 50 percent of them held in a bank so if we held usdc say as 50 percent of our collateral there'd be 50 percent in euros but we wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to cost you either have bank accounts or anything like that circle would handle on all that but we'd actually be mica compliant as a result so we'd be kind of the only decentralized compliant currency because I think Athena would be the only competitor for us really then, and they definitely aren't complained. Yeah, um, so it is, it is quite bullish. I, I mean, I've seen people say that it's not feasible to implement it. Um, I guess that's where the technical people can help. Um, but from reading about it from outside point of view, it looks really bullish. Um, well, in terms of feasibility, like everything that they've outlined in that proposal is kind of something that could be built on top of Juris protocol. Like essentially it's just a loan protocol is all it is an over collateralized loan protocol. And you just need to decide um to know what collateral to you know like to what white listed collateral you'd have. But like in terms of feasibility, I don't see it being very difficult at all. It's probably the easiest thing we could do going forward, especially if Juris has been built on chain. Because you'll have everything there need already. Yeah, Juris can play a big part in that as well. So no, I'm I'm really excited to see the white paper. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely bring you guys, as soon as there's more information, we'll, we'll share it with you guys in one of the spaces or maybe even do a separate spaces. Um, other news, I saw that 46 million USTC was burned. That wasn't burnt initially for the Mirror Protocol asset. So that's another uh, positive. There should be burns end of October from TFL LFG. Um, so more burns coming. I believe that's about it from the L1 stuff. Um, Actually, just while we're on that and TFL burning, um, it's probably worth mentioning that people should move their assets away from Terra Station and, and onto another wallet because come the 30th of, of October, if, if nobody's taking that over, it, it's just not going to function anymore. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Redline. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, and and, 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 and other stuff you want to talk about, Shall we talk about Juris before, um, or shall we talk about Elbon LL? Let me bring on Elbon now. Maybe let's uh, talk about the Elbon order book. Yeah, I've invited him to speak. Uh, whilst Elbon comes up, a couple other things we want to talk about. So we'll talk to Elbon now, then we'll talk about um, Solid Proof, what's happening with Juris, um, some alpha. We'll bring on uh, David to talk about Juris. We'll talk about meme coins. I've started that. 1 to 10k challenge to hype up meme coin stuff so we'll, we'll share with you meme coin and um, terra casinos burnings and meme coin as well and then the poker tournament that uh, i talked about past few spaces and um, that could be fun as well so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all of that later on in the spaces but we've got elban here how's it going elban it's going great can you guys hear me okay yes yes we can uh, so I guess awesome. same question to you before we uh, get into your order book stuff. Uh, what's your thoughts on what's happening with Luna Classic? Any thoughts or ideas to share with the community? You know, um, really what I wanted to, to say about uh, what's going on with Classic is we've got, we got a lot of good things uh, baking uh, in the oven, right, by a lot of different people. And so um, we've got a very passionate, passionate user base. So I think good things are coming. I know sometimes it, it appears like, hey, what's going on? You know, this is taking too long, or you know, this may not work. But but I think that with everybody putting putting effort in, it's really going to pay off in the future. 
And we just did one of these things to bang, right? It could be your uh, Elban stuff. It could be Juris. It could be a gaming project that not not come. We just need one of the things to just go viral and, and catch on. Yeah, but I also think, and that is true, right? To get to get everybody's attention, right? To get uh, people who are not who are playing elsewhere to come over. But but it really is going to take, uh, I think, many projects, right? Because sure, that one thing that goes viral is going to get people over. And, uh, and they're going to want to see what else is there, right? So, so as long as we get some other things uh, that they can take a look at, we'll keep their interest for a little bit longer. And, uh, that's what we want, right? We, want, we don't want uh, just to be that shiny, shiny penny for that split second, right? We want, we want to be involved in their action, new members. Yeah, sounds good. Right, the yeah, floor's yours then. Do you want to introduce um, the first limit order book on Classic? Yeah, so it is very interesting because um, I actually I actually started this quite a while ago, maybe like six months ago or something. Uh, and it was originally for uh, was catered to, to base, um, and it was it was essentially for people to be able to sell their base. Um, so it was only uh, inputting ask, and only like half of the order implemented. Um, and, and the reason for that is because of the way that base works. It, um, people could sell to the so combining curve, or if they sold this way, it was actually going to keep the price more stable. Um, so th that was good. Um, it worked okay for, uh, for what, we, what I was using it for. Um, but people did want to actually have a cool, hey, I want to, I either want to put in a buy order or a sell. And so, uh, I don't know, maybe like four months ago or so, I, um, I had this looked just like the order book that, that's here now. Um, except it used Lunk, native Lunk, not not the CW Lunk using the help. Um, but what what I we ran into is we we're having a lot of issues with uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the code three errors. It's probably gas related. Um, sorry to um, interrupt you. That uh, red line Jewish, Can you guys hear Elbon clearly, or is it just me? It's a little muffled, but I can make him out all right. Yeah, it's not very clear. I don't know if you're, if you're a loudspeaker or on the phone. Okay, one second. How's that? I think that's, I think better. that's better. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was saying there is that the, the first version of the uh, of the order book that I put together used native lunk, but I, we were running into a lot of code three errors, which were probably related to uh, gas issues, um, even though. Uh, you know, we were bumping up the multiplier and the gas. And so kind of had to put that on, on the back burner for a little bit. And uh, I started playing around with the uh, CW Lunk, which I was using to airdrop, uh, essentially Lunk, but airdropping it that way. I also have this uh, Pixel Pack app, uh, pack application that uh, it's for NFT um, staking. And so at least on the base side of the house for our, our NFTs, we're just paying out in CW Lunk. Um, anyways, we grabbed that and, uh, you know, that using the CW Lunk actually helped out with the uh, getting rid of those errors. And, um, you know, I, I, I was like, hey, this, this kind of works for base, but it can work for just about any token. So let's go ahead and, and just open it up. Um, and that's why you will see like there's like 20 some pairs on there uh, because anybody can actually just go on there and, and put a buyer or sell order. And if there's any other token tokens they want to be on there, pretty easy to add to. But um, yeah, one, one of the things that in this version does, uh, that, that my previous version did not, was before you actually had to buy the entire order or sell the entire, well, I guess the buyer had to buy the entire order. Uh, but for, but now uh, you can do a partial order so you don't have to take the, the entire thing. So that um, people like that quite a bit because sometimes, you know, some of the orders that were in there in the O version, they were pretty large and, you know, that limited the number of people that could actually buy them. But yeah, uh, other than that, um, so it is on chain. Um, it, it will initially, the order book, uh, the, the contracts will initially match, try to match an order with whatever's put in. If one doesn't match, it'll it'll add either uh, you know a bid or ask depending on what you're putting in. Um, 
And so it doesn't autom the, the contract doesn't automatically continue to try to match those. But I think um, using a, a back end, I think I can automate that and, and make that uh, happen. So that that'll be uh, coming in in the in a you know next couple of weeks maybe or or maybe month depending on what's going on. But yeah, I'm 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 happy to see that people uh, took interest in it. Uh, obviously, it's a lot of work. Um, but uh, I'm happy to do the work if 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 somebody will use it. Uh, and I think uh, what it does allow is, and I, I saw some people talking about this uh, yesterday, um, high frequency trading, right? And so right now, the way that things stand is kind of almost, it's, it's not impossible to do high frequency trading, but it, because of the fees involved, it becomes kind of prohibited. So hopefully this will allow, uh, that type of uh, uh, activity to open up. And then, you know, that will lead to further volume, hopefully, uh, which uh, w w will help everybody out. So is it the fee? Oh, you'll have to go on mute. Yes, uh, so, the, so, the, so if the, when you place an order and then you uh, take the order off, do you have to pay fees, the burn tax, every time you do that? No, so because it's using uh, CW Lunk, which is a, it's just a regular uh, CW20 token, right? Uh, the difference being that it's hard pegged to, to Lunk. So um, CW20 is actually minted when somebody deposits uh, uh, native Lunk into the contract. And then when somebody on the other side, right, when somebody uh, deposits CW, uh, I'm sorry, CW Lunk into the contract to get their Lunk back. Um, at that point, uh, the burn tax, anytime the Lunk, native Lunk is moving, the burn tax comes into effect there. So CW Lunk doesn't eliminate paying tax, the burn tax. What it does though is you pay it on the way in and, and then on the way out when you get back to, to native. Uh, obviously, there's no <laughs> CW Lunk on exchanges or anything like that so i mean if somebody wants to cash out and go to the exchanges they they have to go to to native long anyways um but i i did mention the hard peg there so it's one for one because cw lunk is not minted until somebody deposits a lunk and then on the other side it's burned a cw lunk is burned when when somebody goes back to native so it's always back one to one hard hard pegged it, it won't it will not deviate from one to one okay so it's a wrapped asset okay and and in terms of uh, adding orders so is it manual at the moment and going forward you'll have it something like how bow was for fin kujira where it was like automated like market making strategies to make trading simple for like um normal users or crypto casuals so um it, it can be automated fairly easily. I mean, it, it's just the, the order books are smart contracts on on chain, right? So it's just a, a standard call into the contract. So I mean, a script could do that, right? But normally, somebody would do that through the front end manually, right? But um, of course, same thing can be done by a script or by a, a, a bot that wants to do high frequency trading. Now, the way that the system is designed is there's, there's actually multiple contracts. Um, and so there's a primary contract that it's called the ledger and all that does is so there's no funds that flow in or out of that one it's it just keeps track of all the other uh individual smart contracts that that are created to support the um the, the order book so every when you when you first get on there you'll see where it says um uh initiate a contract and that's because each wallet is linked to a smart contract your own smart contract Right, so you create one, and then from that point on, that same wallet will continue to utilize the same smart contract. Right, so that's why I said there's multiple. There's there's one that's called the ledger that just keeps track of all these other smart contracts that are out there, and of course, uh, um, no funds are actually transferred from uh, one of those other smart contracts to like a central. Like the ledger doesn't hold everybody's money. All that is separate within. Uh, each each contract that's created for the wallet. 
Well, I think that's even better than Finn Kujira because I know when I was using Finn, like I had to manually say, even if I placed limit orders with the bot or whatever, I would have to manually go in and accept each of those orders after the fact, you know, when they were filled. But otherwise, the funds wouldn't go to the wallet. So this actually sounds much better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, everything is held in that escrow until it's time to transfer. When when somebody makes a buy or sell call, um, it, it essentially goes right to that escrow, and the escrow releases the funds. Also, awesome. sounds good. So, what, what are the next steps? What are the next steps? How can we help you, help you as well? How can the community help you as well? What can we do for you all? What are your next steps? So I, obviously I run a, my own project, right? Just like a bunch of you guys that are on here um, do also, right? And so what I, uh, when I created the order book, um, instead of, instead of start charging a percentage of whatever the, uh, the, the order size is, it just charges a flat rate of 0 0.1 base, which is base token is the token for, you know, for Elbun projects, um, what we're doing. So that part is, it was fixed at 0 0.1 so that you could, you know, somebody can go on there and, you know, put hundreds of dollars through and it's not gonna cost them an arm or leg. Again, helping out with the uh, high frequency trading. So what can the community do right now to help out? I, I think, uh, if we if we can all get together and e either go on there and interact with the with the pairs that are on there, or uh, go ahead and request more pairs to be put on there, that way we can actually uh, start filling up that order book and and start seeing the, the uh, orders go in and out. Now, uh, obviously for for base, there's there's orders that are constantly going through there, and I think Frog has quite a bit of orders that, that they put in, and and they're actually. Uh, uh, working with uh but some of the other uh tokens don't have uh either don't have any orders or very few now again th that's just th that order book is is on chain so anybody can go on there you don't need permission from anybody to go on there and put a buy or sell order um i mean it's, it's just as simple as like hey what's the price of uh you know token x y or z okay well i'm gonna go ahead and put a buy order for you know something a little less than that in case, you know, I might be able to get it right <laughs> without the slippage and all that. Um, and you can always cancel at any time too, right? If it's not filled, obviously. Um, so just, just if the community can get on there and, and, uh, you know, just explore a little bit, uh, you know, maybe, maybe put some orders on there that I think I would help out, uh, like help get the word out at least to, to the rest of the community. Now, I know there's a, a bunch of folks on, uh, on Twitter that have, actually um you know they've been saying like hey this is super impressive very nice you know nice work and that's gotten it a lot of attention but um i think just just going in there and interacting with it a little bit would, would help out quite a bit just i mean it, 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 it the order size can be pretty small it's just uh to go on there and test it and see what it, what it's like sounds good el but i'm gonna put an order for uh Juris at a very low price see if i can get filled Maybe you should tell uh, to DJ Trev how it works because he's desperate to get like cheap jurors, <laughs> put limit order at ninety percent uh, discount. Um, <laughs> I, I want to add something, uh, Elbon, because uh, I saw that and I I heard from a couple people that um, they are not really happy about the um, the CW twenty uh, CW lung token, and I think not many people are aware why it's necessary to to have it basically to make the order book work and usable for people like me and Redline who want to do proper market making on the order book. Um, so to, before you answer, um, I would like to explain like what the complaint is. Um, some people argue that, um, oh, you guys are just bypassing the tax. You want, you don't want Lung to succeed because uh, with the CW Lung, you're, you know, like uh, bypassing the tax and whatever. But I want, what I want to explain to those people is, um, I don't think Elban or anybody like is doing this out of. Uh, I don't. I don't think there is malicious intent by doing so. I think that um, if they didn't do that, 
the and I think also Streff agrees on it, but I don't want to talk on behalf of him, so um, I won't. Um, but if they didn't do that with the 0.5% tax, um, it would be impossible to do market making for the pairs because market making basically means putting limit buy orders and limit sell orders on the book and canceling them if the price keeps moving, obviously, because you don't want to get wrecked. You have to adjust your quotes for bids and asks, like uh, buys and sells in the order book, according to the price that's traded on the DEX. Otherwise, uh, you get wrecked as the market maker or even as a trader. Now, if you cannot cancel orders with very low fee, basically just paying gas fees, then it becomes unsustainable and uh, you will not be able to do market making and then there will be no volume on the, the order book and then the product is unusable for the average guy. Uh, but maybe Elban can expand on then that and redline because uh, I think there's lots of mis understandings and like confusions in the community um yeah like even from what i can add to that like so if you're, if you're a market maker right uh, the higher your spreads are right right you have the more chance of making profit but you're, you have more chance of making loss because if you have a spread of point like generally market makers will run on even 0.1.2 percent they'll be running like just above transaction fees or they'll often have no trading fees so they can trade with what we would normally be paying in fees so what you what ends up happening is you get a really high volume from a really low amount of money um like i know at one point there when when i was trading on binance um using futures like i was generating millions in volume from like a thousand down um because i was second i was say i had such tight spreads and so if you if, as a market maker if, if you have a spread that's greater than 0.5 not only might there not be any trading or low volume but because you have to take such big increments between your between your positions say uh, you you run a much higher risk of taking a loss um so it, it, it's a riskier trade basically so you that's probably why we don't have a lot of market makers on chain is because you just can't even in terms of arbitrage like if you look at arbitrage like point most other exchanges if you were to see 0 0.5 0 0.6 point you know 0.5 percent are those don't exist do you know what i mean they'd be closed long before that and that's why our markets are maybe sit a little off pace with the rest of the markets because nobody wants to arb here absolutely and, and if i may uh address the uh discussion here uh so first the, the cw lunk has actually existed for quite a bit of time it's it's been on chain for a long time uh, so it's, it's another thing that, that's new now. It was originally created because, um, yeah, I don't know how else, uh, some of the other projects are set up, but the way that our project with the base token is set up, um, it, when somebody buys base, it actually gets split off into like five different, um, five different wallets. There's quite a bit of movement that happens, not only when they're buying, but just on a normal day-to-day uh, -to, -day to keep the operation flowing nicely. Um, and so internally, we have to figure out a way to transfer that value, right, in an, in a, an efficient manner, cost efficient manner, just so that we can keep the, the project running, right? So obviously, uh, uh, you can only buy base with Lunk, like native Lunk, and when you when you trade in base, you get native Lunk back. So that that part was always going to be there, right? Um, but it became kind of cost prohibitive to just move the, like for proper accounting reasons. There are different accounts that hold the money at different times for different purposes. Now, if you're constantly paying a tax on that when you're internal to yourself, um, that 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 gets to be very expensive and and I mean, almost like well, we, we can't run the pro we can't run this project um, because we pay, we're paying too much, right? We're losing too much money. So in, that was the internal thing. And that doesn't affect anybody else because that money was going to just stay inside the project anyway. It just had to be moved around. Um, but at the end of the day, with, with CW Lunk, anyways, if you you still have to pay a tax to, to go from native to CW Lunk. Like the tax is still there. Um, now, on the other side, you also have to pay the tax too. So tax is getting paid no matter what. 
Now, what, what the good thing about CW Lunk, though, even though if you're on the border book and you're not paying a tax, you, you're you're using you're utilizing smart contracts. So smart contracts utilize gas, right? And so there's still quite a bit of fees generated just because they're smart contracts and they have to run, right? It's not like um, running uh, placing an order on the order book. It's it's not like just sending lunk from from one person to the other where it can be like fairly cheap as far as gas fees are concerned, right? Um, it, it'll use quite a bit because when I say quite a bit, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe a hundred long or something like that, um, because there's smart contracts actually doing some, some, uh, cr number crunching there. So, uh, I, I, I know there's, there may be, uh, some people out there that are not happy about, uh, CW Lunk not paying tax for every transaction, but it, it actually is consuming quite a bit of gas. So that's, that's still a plus there, uh, in the long run. And and if you have a lot of volume, I mean that's a lot of uh, smart contract interaction, which which adds up fairly fairly quickly. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to say is because uh, I, I want to make this clear: C a CW twenty token on the chain is like there's always been CW twenty tokens, and there are pairs out there from CW twenty token to CW twenty token. Those don't pay a tax either. So um, I think if we have a problem with CW lung. Then we have a problem with every pair out there that's CW20 to CW20. Um, at least, at least with CW Lunk, you are assured that there's a tax paid on the front end and the back end, uh, and that it's pegged one hard pegged one to one with Lunk. So people are not you losing uh, on their bow. So uh, those are just my thoughts. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe you know I. I don't think I'm wrong, but I mean, there could be other opinions out there. Um, and I mean, I, I don't know. I, our contracts pay quite a bit of uh, gas and man, I pay quite a bit of tax when I'm, when I'm handed out. Uh, sometimes I'm getting a lot of on stake because lately I've had, had somebody on stake 77 uh, million. When I say on stake, it's through to base. So it has to go through our contract, not, not traditional staking. Yeah, that, that uh, we're paying tax on that for sure. <laughs> So anyways, um, hopefully that was that was pretty clear. I think I, I kind of uh, I made a straight a little bit here and there. But uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and fire them off. Well, my thoughts is you couldn't do this if we, we didn't have the CW token in the wrapped asset because of adding order, taking orders out. You couldn't keep paying tax on it. So this protocol that you're building wouldn't work otherwise. So, so to have some a part of this, you still have to pay tax like you explained it, having a little tax from something uh than not have it at all it's, it's a no-brainer for me so i i fully support um what you're doing and it's a good way i i was trying i was thinking of how you go around it so it's a it's a clever way to go around it and and bring this order book style um uh, decks uh, to luna classic absolutely I've got a so if we um if we could do this for other stuff, could we raise the tax to 1.2% and any apps that struggle just use CW20? I mean, you could, right? And that's probably one way to uh, to attract some projects out there who are who don't come to Classic, right? Because they don't want to pay the tax on, on each transaction. Well, if they come over and use CW Lunk, uh, at least we can guarantee that they're going to pay two uh, taxes twice, right? On, on money that's flowing and for them they could just use it, it, the internal logic is just straight up cw 20 logic so nothing crazy there's nothing funky they have to do um yeah i think that i think it would be beneficial and again cw lunk is just a contract that's out on the chain anybody can go and swap in and out uh, at any point um so yeah yeah definitely other projects could make use of it now the only thing that it's kind of funky though, um, I'm sorry, I, 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 I had to really say say this really quick. CW Lunk, although it's a CW twenty token, it is hard pegged to to Lunk. So you know uh, we got to protect that. We got to protect that hard peg because we can't. Uh, there there are certain trading algorithms out there that will not um kind of respect that one-to-one -one, and that's that's not good 
right? <laughs> which is why, um, which is why I don't, we don't use that. We use the, a different method to hard pick it. So could you elaborate on that? Is it not just like wrapped Ethereum? So it's you, unless there's obviously a smart contract risk and like the level of trust for the holder, but it should be, like you said, it's just hard pegged, right? It's just a wrapped asset. Yeah, you can look at it as wrapped. So um, I was I was doing some research months ago on Astroport, and Astroport actually has uh, they call it a native wrapper, um, and they use that for for some of their um, uh, rewards, right? They'll they'll use um, they'll, they'll wrap it and it becomes a CW twenty. And for some of the stuff that they're doing, I guess it makes more sense for them to do that. Um, so I, you know, I saw that and I was like, oh, that, that makes. That's kind of what like gave me the idea to start exploring this. Now I don't know how they do their wrapping, um, so so I didn't like use their contract. What we use is the, the same thing that we've always used from day one. It's a token bonding curve, um, except that this token bonding curve is set at one to one, whereas um, you know, if you look at base, base is not set at one to one. It's made to actually grow over time. Um, so that's what, that that is the 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 wrapping mechanism, if you will, right? When you deposit Lunk into the contract, well, it stays in there and no kidding, like a CW20 has to be minted. That's the wrapped one, right? Has to be minted, right? So that Lunk stays in the contract and that's that minted one, which is the wrapped one, flows out. Um, so yes, it's just, it's wrapped, but um, you know, there are many different ways to do wrapping, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's many different ways. The one that we use is a token bonding curve. That way it will never deviate. Cool, thanks. Uh, Juris, Redline, any more questions for Elban? Um, no, that's it, thank you. Uh, Warhounds, if you could go on mute, please. Um, we'll take questions after. Okay, sorry, Julius or Redline, did you have any questions for Elban? Um, no, I, I, I've none anyway, um, but I, I just think maybe maybe miss how kind of bullish this is. There isn't really that many order book dexes actually even in existence, you know, so to have something like this on chain is, is quite bullish. Um, I think people are missing that, like even, even with Kajira and Finn, like it had teething issues, like already uh, Elban's one seems, seems much better to me. Um, I, I think you just need once a few like DeFi heads actually see it and maybe start to use it or maybe liquidity moves over there. Uh, I, I think it could be something very bullish for this chain. Yeah. But it's, it's not really great to our compliments. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for, thank you very much for that. And, and uh, thanks for having me on here and, and going over that. Um, it really does help uh, to get the word out. Um, I appreciate it. And I know, I mean, there might be some hiccups, you know, here and there with it because it's it's fairly new. If so, no problems. We'll, we'll keep uh, addressing it and keep making it better for the community. Uh, one question before you go. So the CW wrap token or wrap like token, who's written the contract? Is it yourself? Yes, yes. I've, I've written all my contracts. And are they like um, um, audited? Because, I mean, that's a risk, right, with the wrapped asset? Yeah, so the, the contract is not audited. Um, it, it is not. But what I what I've done, I can't afford that right now. But I, I the the aim is to get there, right? Um, but you know, I I am uh, fully doxed and and um, I've got all you know. I post my LinkedIn and all that, and, and <laughs> so I, I, you I do. Yeah, you are US Yes, I do. I, I work for the U.S. Air Force, and so, uh, and I'm actually a, a field grade officer. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't, I'm not too far away from getting schwacked if I do something bad, you know, by the U.S. government. So, I got a lot to lose, right? No, but but you're right. Uh, so, it's not it's not audited, but um, um, the, the code, actually, the code for a token bonding, um, is on the Cosm Wasm uh, GitHub, and it is it is uh, no, it's not audited, but it, but all the code is there, so you can go take a look at it, or anybody can go take a look at it and and uh, see how a token bonding curve works. They ha they have a couple other different 
types of contracts that you can look at, but those are all like reference contracts that a good starting point from the Cosm Wasm team. Awesome, man. No, thank you. Because I know that if the Rapta said that's the biggest risk, so I just wanted to point it out. But no, congratulations on what you're building. Um, again, if you want help with marketing, just come up on these spaces. And um, yeah, maybe if I get a chance, I'll try to put some bids on there as well to try it out. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Cool. Thanks. You're happy to stay on, or if you want to shoot off, um, no problem. No worries. We'll move on to the next topic now. We'll go on to Jewish protocol, and then we'll talk about. Um, poker tournament after um jewish protocol solid proof so maybe i can just uh, thank you first of all because i know you thanked everyone on the spaces um your one thing i want to thank you on is like your speaking ability so when we it's, it's your second language and the way you spoke was really well from two years ago when we were doing these spaces to now is your um being able to public speaks come leaps and bounds so i thank you pep, um privately as well in one of our calls but um, you did a really good job. I thought the spaces went well. I'd recommend people that um, what invested in Juris or in doing a classic community, just go check it out. Um, I think it's a good publicity as well for Juris and, and Luna Classic um, to go on spaces like that. Lots of people listen to it. And it's also one of the things with um, Jewish we're trying to do is potentially bring people from outside Luna Classic community um, to check out Jewish and Luna Classic and potentially with the meme coins as well though people have to have messaged people that had never owned Luna Classic had to buy to buy Jewish or other meme coins um, and going on these spaces gets our wide out there in wider cosmos and, and crypto world um, one um, reflection from my side would be some of the questions he asked was really good and when he asked questions about branding um, i know dj did a really good video on it um attracting whales and institutions that's something we've not really considered we've just focused on like jokey and building hype the twitter shilling stuff to attract and build jewish but we do have to keep in mind that going forward once we're building stuff we need to probably have a different marketing approach a more professional marketing approach to um be open for collaborating with bigger institutions or bigger companies so that was a big reflection point for me um, but i thought it went really well uh, frag uh, lunatic especially spoke really well and i think i did my, my bit as well um so really happy with that um lunatic what's your thoughts on it uh I, first of all i would like to make a small correction uh, english is my third language actually persian was the first i learned but it's unfortunately um i'm better speaking german and english than persian so uh, sorry to my parents um just didn't have the chance to practice it a lot um yet it's probably but, better to speak in english than me though <laughs> <laughs> no i don't but thank you redline um but yeah, maybe the way things are going right now, I might have the opportunity next year or the next year after to go uh, to Iran and like practice it a little bit more. Um, but yes, um, the space was great. I think I got uh, lots of great feedback. Um, yeah, the thank you list was pretty long. <laughs> uh, I think I still missed a couple of people in there. Um, and yeah, just today I had uh, I had some, uh, today I had some some some. I didn't really feel uh, well today. Um, I would like to apologize to Rexy for stuff that I wrote him in private. Um, and he was very nice to me afterwards um, as well, because I just saw him that he uh, joined a speaker. Um, and I received another message from somebody else in the community who was, uh, um, how should I call it, having a little bit of beef with jurors, and he uh, he told me that uh, it's all good, man, let's work together and collab and uh, keep pushing like we used to do in 2022, when we were all like rooting for Luna Classic to go to Ascent or whatever. Um, so I'm happy that everything is coming into, falling into place. Um, something else i would like to say because you 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 just talked about the professionalism and uh there was also pfp talks um rexy sent me something today which made me pretty sad um the so there was some some talks about my uh, profile pic from luna lava account um, and today something happened i i it didn't happen today but i i i uh, got the message today that um Unfortunately, the NFT artists who created my PFP and also uh, PFPs from other people in the community, like uh, Max Mustaman, he's in a listener panel. He his profile pic is actually uh, an F NFT art made by her. Um, she 
always supported us when we were in Terra Rebels and stuff, uh, free of charge. She drew an NFT for myself, uh, not an NFT, an artwork from my girlfriend. Uh, I basically gifted it to her uh, one or two years ago for a birthday present. Unfortunately, um, she passed away from cancer. Um, so I'm pretty sad about it. And um, my PFP will stay. And if Juris uh, is successful, then hopefully um, her art will like uh, live on through us. So that's something I also wanted to say. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry to hear that. I don't think I've had, maybe I followed her or had some Twitter, but not really spoken to her that well. But yeah, sorry to hear that. No, she, uh, to be quite honest, initially when I joined, um, I, I followed her because she was being followed by CZ and uh, the uh, the profile pic that I have is actually like the Luna Saga or the conspiracy. Um, the original one was like, uh, it's Du Quan um, holding Luna and uh, <laughs> baby CZ in his arms and baby CZ is like uh, taking or stealing the Luna away from him. That's like the Biden's conspiracy and Saga. And I found it fun and uh, purchased it from her. That's how we got into contact. Uh, and after that, she, she helped supporting uh, my marketing efforts with Terra Rebels and stuff. She she was really cool to work with. She never uh, asked for anything except for supporting her NFT, NFTs and stuff. And when she got the cancer, she had some um, donation campaigns going on and I supported it. She got accused by lots of people for trying to grift and whatever. It was uh, not nice to see. And now, uh, yeah, those people actually can go and verify that she didn't lie. Uh, so I hope that we can like, uh, keep her memories uh, alive by um, maybe even just having the profile pic, you know, so, uh, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so do you want to give us an update on Juris, what you've been working on? Oh, yes. Uh, so Juris, um, maybe you should actually get David up if he's still in the listener panel. Uh, I can see him right now. Um, so let's start with the other thing and maybe uh, try to get him up as speaker. So uh, I have an announcement to make. Um, I teased it already last week. Um, in Persian culture, there is a concept of uh, Shirini. Shirini may means um, sweets uh, or candies in Persian language. Um, and it's... <laughs> It's a concept that whenever you uh, reach a certain milestone in life, if anything of uh, anything great happens to you, you know, uh, like for example, if you bought a fancy new car or if, um, if you got, uh, you know, if you graduated from school, something like this, then um, in Persian culture, um, usually the guy who achieved this um, has to give sweets or shirini, uh, shirini to his friends and family. Um, I love this concept and I used to do it with my, uh, my ex-girlfriend also loved it. So whenever something great happened, we always went, uh, to get ourselves some Shirini, uh, because I'm not into sweets. I used to, I prefer to have some, uh, proper dinner, um, and for lung community or actually for the jurist delegators, uh, I have a surprise, which I'm going to fund from my personal jurist funds. So I don't want to use pre-minted tokens for that or anything like that. Um, what I will do is uh, Frag and I are going to deploy a third contract, um, an airdrop of liquid uh, jurors. And I'm going to drop 500 million jurors on the delegators and there will be a whale cap of 100 million. So um, that if Basically, everybody uh, who has staked 100 million or more will receive the same amount. And other than that, we will just use the snapshot data. So all the guys who got the vesting airdrops um, will also receive a little bit of liquid uh, jurors to celebrate together. I hope not, and, uh, you guys are not going to dump it immediately. Um, so 500 million is like 5% of the original airdrop amount. Um, that's the first bullish alpha announcement. It could be bullish or bearish, depending on if people dump or hold. <laughs> nah, I don't think it will make much of a difference, to be honest. 500 million isn't that much. No, no, it's okay. Okay, uh, David here. 
Should we let David make the announcement? Yes, please. Yeah, hi everybody. Hopefully you can you can hear me well. Uh, so I'm very pleased to announce that uh, Cheers Protocol will cooperate with my company Challenge Studio to bring a new branding strategy and UX proper UX UI design to Cheers Protocol. So I'm more than happy to you work on yet another project on Terra Classic, and we'll try to bring you. Uh, the best possible use, you know, usable and and free to easy to use and clear UX UI for for all apps that Juris will build. And uh, collaborations will start very very soon. We just had a meeting before that, before that before that this space. Uh, like I already uh, wrote on on X, uh, LL is basically doc one but bigger. If anybody wants to know, <laughs> I want I want you know give you any pictures because I did not took one just out of <laughs> just to be clear, but here's the one but bigger. Um, so yeah, so things look very interesting. Hopefully you will be able to you know build something that in terms of the function and form will be on top level, top work level, and and thanks to that you know not only the whales but bigger you know corporation organizations companies. You know those B two B target audience. Let's say will will you know consider uh, juries as professional, interesting, and worth looking into, right? So, so we'll, all both parties uh, will benefit. Terra Classic and juries users, uh, investors will benefit, and we'll have a great time working together uh, in the next couple of months. So, uh, look forward to this. And only juries will be developed by you know professional software software house professional company dev company but it will be also designed by by let's say experts with experience in in designing ux ui so yeah this is uh, this is the the help from my side thank you thank you guys for allowing me to to tell this hopefully this is uh, a, lot, a lot of you will consider this as as cool information because you know uh, creating products is about functionality so development code and how it works but it's also about how it looks the form itself uh so it will be bullish hopefully for everybody thank you very much if anybody anybody has got a question then feel free to to ask i will post information on the x uh, in a couple of minutes time and let's wait for the first results of our cooperation i guess I'm super bullish on this. Uh, thanks, David, for for or David. I think is the right pronounce. Yeah, <laughs> David in Polish. Yeah, um, I have some Polish friends, so I know. Um, so thanks, David, for for your cooperation. Um, thank you for for agreeing to like uh, to give us a little bit of discount and stuff uh, to make it work for all of us. Um, and I'm looking forward to to everything that we're going to build because uh, guys, when I told David um, what I expect from the UI and stuff uh, last week when we had our first chat about it, uh, he immediately came up with some ideas and presented me some 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 um, what do you say that some uh, pro it's not prototype. Bench those will be be benchmarks of, of what we could actually build in terms of the visual part, right? It was more visual, but benchmarks and or inspirations you can say yeah exactly so uh, when david presented me those i saw that he exactly understood what i'm talking about and uh, i'm i think i'm confident enough to say that our dep will not our web all our deps uh, will not look the same as uh, your average uh, cosmos dep or web free dep so i think it will be mature and uh, I'm really bullish and uh, looking forward to see what we are going to build together. Teamwork makes great work. <laughs> this is what I say all the time. So I'm, I'm very happy to. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, Redline, uh, have you guys got any questions for Jewish or anything else to add? Um, not really just yet. Um, like I'm still working on the market making stuff, but um, I don't really have any new news on that yet. So. Cool. Uh, Lunatic, anything else to add or should we move on to the next topic? 
No, I think that's it for now with bullish news. <laughs> In case I missed something, probably my team or somebody will ping me and then I can edit later. No, I think that's good. Um, any news on the development work starting on Jewish Protocol? Oh, um, yeah. Um, the news is that uh, we are still working on the Git book. Um, actually, Frag is going to start working on it next week. Um, that was a requirement by Solid Proof so that they can start. Um, oh man, I don't know the English word. There is in German, there is a word. It's called a Pflichtenheft Lastenheft. Maybe somebody can send me DM how it's how you say that in English, but it's basically requirement docs for development. Um, the first one is what the product owner was basically uh, giving work to the contractor expects to see written out in detail. And then the second document is something that the contractor is going to provide to you usually, um, which sets expect like they're going to tell us exactly how they're going to build it and have like specifications and everything on it. Um, and solid proof is going to help us to for each milestone that we have in plan, uh, going to create those two documents in detail so that we can submit it to our contractor. Um, I don't want to say the name yet until we actually signed the, the contract um, so that they can basically add those things into the contract so that there is no misunderstanding about uh, what we're going to build and in terms of milestones. Um, after talking with David, uh, I think I may have to talk to the lead dev to see whether we can uh, change the order of some of the milestones. Uh, basically, the UI uh, milestone, which was supposed to happen uh, first. Uh, but from what I saw with Dave, uh, David, I think it makes more sense to, to do the UI UX design a little bit later down the road and so that those guys can focus on the back end, on the contracts. Uh, I think will be possible, but I have to check with them. Um, Duncan is also going to help us with the Git book um, for the landing protocol to review it and uh, work with Frag. I cannot promise to the community that we will be able to start working on the development uh, mid October because that was initially like the, the deadline or the, the date I had in mind. Um, but with the new solid proof thing, I think we have to postpone it till end of the summer. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I just removed the guy, if that's okay yeah. with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we have to postpone development uh, until end of the month. Um, because I want to be uh, very clear about the requirements and stuff. And I don't think it makes a huge difference. And uh, we already talked with the lead dev about it. And he said, take all the time you need to make sure that everything is laid out properly. And I don't think that this is going to affect um, the total time frame or the date of launch, which is set for uh, end of Q1 2025. And we're trying to, to make it happen until then. Um, so yeah, I think development should start first of uh, November. Currently, awesome. I think last time we said we're looking at end of October. So yeah, it's not it's not too bad. No, I think we'll be fine. To be honest, uh, I would like to rather do it properly and have no bad surprises later on uh, than to rush it now and uh, save like two weeks or something, and then we have headaches and issues later. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can move on to the next topic. We've talked about more of the serious stuff, Repeg, um, order book, first order book on Luna Classic, Jewish Protocol, Tax to Gas. We'll talk about some DGEN stuff now. So we've got um, Darren here from Terra Casino. So he plays poker a lot. And I've, I'm not a good poker player by any, <laughs> any imagination, but I just play it for fun. Um, so I've been talking to him about potentially doing like a poker tournament. Um, so people in the Luna Classic community play poker. It could be a fun way to just hang out and, and burn some Luna Classic as well. So uh, Darren, do you want to introduce yourself first and then uh, talk a bit about the poker tournament? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, guys. As I said, yeah, my name's Darren. Um, I help run the, the poker and stuff on Terra Casino. Um, essentially, at the moment, we have 
um, a series going on that we guaranteed 2 million euros throughout until December. Um, and yeah, I've kind of handled on the topic of potentially um, creating a tournament for a, a lunk space to kind of hang out in and chill. Um, and, and yeah, we've basically just got a brand new sports book, all been redesigned, um, more in-play betting features and more lines available. And obviously with the uh, exciting new uh, uh, announcement that we're, we're burning different coins on the lunk chain. Um, and yeah, we can all help do that together. So for the poke tournaments, how, how will it work? So if people want to take part in it, what do they DM yourself? How do we? Sort yeah. Of so so how we can how we can sort of set it up? We haven't we haven't got anything concrete yet, um, but what I've been thinking is pretty much if if we sign up if they sign up for an uh, an account on our website, um, it's all done through our partner with Web Three Poker, and we would be able to potentially create a tournament um, that would be for a specific time um well this is ongoing like through the end of the um the spaces and we could just start a tournament set up an account on there and we could maybe even give away some some prizes to the winners that uh that's like a little free roll okay sounds good so yeah guys if you're interested um i mean i could take part in it i'll probably go out in the first round but we can uh, if you guys are interested <laughs> in playing um poker you've played it before uh do dm us it'd be good to have like maybe some burn element to it so maybe half goes to the winner and half we burn lunk um or something just to make it a bit more interesting for our community um so yeah, guys if you're interested uh, dm the terra casino account and um we'll to arrange it for maybe later in the year you know take i know you play poker as well will you be up for it uh i'll be up for it and i'll be playing and participating i love poker actually I'm not very good at it, but uh, I always win against my friends most of the time. So uh, I'll be there and I'll be playing. Uh, I fucking love poker, actually. To be honest. <laughs> we'll have to make sure maybe Darren doesn't play because if he plays, we'll probably won't win. Uh, <laughs> we'll probably ban him from playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Anything else to add, Darren? Uh, no, apart from just um i would really encourage you guys to uh, honestly check out the new changes in our in our sports book if you do like to sort of degen on on some sports betting um we just had like a brand new overhaul um of it so it now looks really clean and it's a lot more competitive um now opposed to uh other bookmakers you know we can obviously give better odds and also help burn uh, luna classic and obviously now as you know we're burning different coins such as cat with hat and terra and that can obviously expand i actually used your casino before uh, when it, when you guys launched i think rexy was uh, was um, sending me the link and asked me for feedback i was one of the first guy who actually <laughs> used uh, all of that stuff and yeah. even back then i thought it's pretty good actually so yeah, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and um, the the hot the like the the in play betting now that we have available on our sports betting is now honestly pretty incredible for for it being a crypto casino at least. I will uh, make sure to check it out. Uh, although um, I don't like I don't want to endorse uh, degen gambling, but maybe from time to time it's okay to to bet on some games. In Germany, it's pretty huge. In Germany, lots of my friends bet on uh, Bundesliga games on soccer. Um, so I think it's OK if I say that uh, maybe some people can check it out. Yeah, yeah, uh, of course, it's it's um, a fine balance that we want to we want to align to and make sure everyone enjoys themselves still. Um, betting around the world, you know, as as you know, countries become richer and whatnot, it sort of becomes a, a nice way for people to to enjoy themselves um and personally for myself uh, i'm speaking for myself here if i have a you know a small bet on a on a game or or something i find it personally more enjoyable and engaging to watch me me too actually uh i sometimes bet on sports i have to admit yeah, I do that as well. But I limit myself to like, I don't know, like a certain amount. Like even this week, I had two bets on. I wanted Arsenal to lose and they were losing 1-0 and they won 2-1 or 3-1. And then my team, Spurs, were winning 2-0. 
Um, and we'd lost it 3-2, so maybe I should stop betting on, on Terra Casino. <laughs> I bet it on Tottenham, by the way. Did you bet on Tottenham to lose? Exactly. Oh, man, you made money. I shared the bet as well on, on Twitter. I, was, I don't know how we lost, man. 2-0. Maybe I should listen to my friends and stop supporting Tottenham. It's, it's getting embarrassing now. 2-0, we're winning. And then my dad was making fun of me as well. I was watching it with my dad. He was making fun of me as well. You should stop cheering at, at, at Tottenham Hell, man. Yeah, I think I think I should. It's it's getting embarrassing now. I, I just waste time as well. You you look up, look forward to it. You plan it. I was going to my dad's to watch it, um, and then yeah, you just lose. So it just feels like I wasted today. But yeah, I don't know who else to support. Uh, I do follow the Premier League a lot. So well, you go for Inter, man. Go for Inter. Serie easy. <laughs> Maybe I'll support. Who do you support, Jewish? You don't follow Bundesliga as much, do you? Um, I used to follow it a lot, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, nowadays, I only follow if I bet on stuff, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, so, yeah, I'm just happy when Bayern uh, doesn't win, because that's the German thing. If you're not a fan of Bayern uh, Munich, then you're pretty happy when they don't win, because otherwise, I, Bundesliga has become quite boring, um, because they always win, and then it becomes, you know, like... Uh, like boring to watch it because you already know Bayern is going to win the Bundesliga. Yeah, well, it was really funny. So there's a joke in England about Harry Kane being cursed. So Harry Kane's England's captain and he used to be captain of Tottenham as well. And he's never won anything. He's a really good player, but he's never won anything. The only um, only time he's not won it is uh, he went to Bayern last season and Bayern didn't win so it's like the Harry Kane curse and, and Bayern didn't finally win the Bundesliga after like years um, and guys there is a pin post I don't know how to I, just, I don't I mean the, the I'm, 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 I'm trying to delete for like the what yeah minute or so but it's, it's like, like branded. spammed like hundreds I think I've clicked delete loads of times it's just there so maybe we'll have to cut the space short of it um but no, so yeah, Terra Casino, guys, if, if you want to play part in that uh, poker tournament, let us know. And like uh, Jewish said, uh, Lunatic said, don't gamble everything. It's, I don't want to begin gambling. I, I said I'd have fun with poker and bet on like football games. If you've got a gambling addiction, don't take part in it. But yeah, do check it out um, uh, for a bit of fun. Okay, I think Gokupala, you came in and spoke. Um, Rexy, have you got anything else to add, mate? And Hey up there, good day to you all. It's uh, there's always an interesting day on a Sunday, isn't it? It's um, I had an interesting one just earlier on as, as well. I uh, I thought, you know, I'll have a couple of hours, so I started painting the garden fence, and then the cat decided to inspect it and then ran around the house. So uh, that's been interesting. Cool. And then anything on the burn <laughs> side cat with that burn? Uh, yeah, there's been no end going on there. It's uh, god, that's been a busy week. Um, We've done two test transactions uh, for burning, and they've gone through absolutely fine. Um, I think we used, um, or is it Cl uh, Wallet Classic Terror Strath's Wallet? We used for those, um, and that went, you know, really well. Um, also, we created a, or had an agreement with Lunk Metrics, and they've. Um, created a tracker so that we can track the burns for Cat with Hat as well. And also we got an agreement with them that they'll set the same up for any other tokens that wish to have their burns tracked as well. So, you know, any in the community that want to do something similar, you know, the um, the opportunity is there as well. So that was really good. Also spoke with Stakebin this morning and they're looking to incorporate some kind of metrics to help track tokens on, on the chain and that's essentially kind of help demonstrate that we've got a, an alive and kicking ecosystem and there's a lot going on there rather than just looking at charts for burning and validators and things like that which i think can often make it appear that we're a bit um maybe closed so to speak so um yeah so that's that's been really positive but yeah on the um from the cat with hat perspective i think it's pretty much all systems go now you know there's plenty of money in the kitty and um you know, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, demonstrate to the outside world that, you know, there is the opportunities to invest um, in tokens on Terra Classic and, you know, 
hopefully that'll be a step towards some kind of Solana meme space here, which can attract external investors in. And of course, once they come in, then they're going to be interested in other things as well, whether it's juris, terror, food, TKMN, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's not just about getting people in just to buy one token. It's showing them that we're all here. Is there somebody speaking or no. Are we no? I thought uh, I thought I'm rocking my computer. I was talking on. Sorry. <laughs> it's not there. It's a bit silence. Yeah. What's going on here? You guys have spoken up before, but yeah, I was talking on mute. But no, what I was what I tried to say <laughs> was that I support all the utility stuff, Juris, Elban, Garuda, and all the other cool stuff that have been built um, on the chain. But like meme coin could still play a big part. Um, we saw what happened in Solana. I hadn't downloaded. Uh, well, actually, no, I did have a Phantom wallet, but with like Tron, I never had a TRX wallet. I never traded on Tron. I used the only time I used Tron was to like move um, USDT because it was cheaper fees than moving on Ethereum. That's the only time I used the Tron network. But with Justin Sun shilling meme coins, and I think he publicly pushed Sundog to like I don't know, multi, maybe even a billion. I don't know. Um, I aped in. I got a TRX wallet, and you know some of the influencer friends and seeing it on Twitter, I started trading. So. Um, Again, we can focus on the utility stuff, but meme coin is here to stay in crypto and it's one of the biggest use cases for crypto. So if Luna Classic, the DGEN community can get involved with it, see some coins pumping, hopefully they'll they'll you know get some lunk. I said earlier, a couple of my friends, um, even on Twitter, they tweeted that the first time they downloaded, you know, transferred some coin, got into Kepler wallet, got some lunk and traded on um Cornhall and Terraport. So um, let's see what we can do with it. It'd be good to get a bit of a meme coin hype going. Rakoff started it. Um, hopefully, um, we can carry on with some of the other meme projects. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the way I look at it is that, and I think um, El Bun, I think he referred to this earlier on. There's a lot of people on Terra Classic building and doing things, whether it's working on L1 and developing the code or whether it's like with El Bun, um you know developing you know l2 there in terms of the um you know order book facility that, he, that is created but whether it's jurors for lending and borrowing terraport whatever it may be um you know nfts you know games and all sorts of stuff but if we all kind of sing the same tune together and we all hold a flag up and wave it as you know as high as what we can, then there's more chance of other people seeing that and coming to the ecosystem and realizing that we are actually alive and kicking. And I think um, I kind of overheard the other, I didn't hear the, the full spaces that you had uh, a couple of days ago, but I mean, it sounded really impressive and, you know, well done for that. But something that um, I think it was Chris who was hosting that for um, Solid Proof, he came across that he wasn't really aware of what was happening within Terra Classic and that actually we was you know, alive and kicking here, as I keep saying. And I don't think that's something that's just isolated him. I think to the wider crypto world, there's a massive amount of people that don't actually realize that we are still here. I think they think that Luna One crashed and that was it. And we've got to show the world that we are still here. And actually, we've got an absolute fantastic kind of blockchain that's cutting edge technology. And we're we're ready. We're ready for anybody to come here. Cool. Well said, Rexy. Uh, one question for Elban. Few people asking about Land Rush. Have you got any update from us or from David? Yeah, David is uh, still working uh, the the Land Rush. Obviously, that he's he's dealing with real world uh, assets there uh, with the land, and so that's a little bit uh, uh, more involved than just a regular, you know, your regular crypto project. So he he's been working with the lawyers, and you know, it's going to take some time, I think to to get it i thought we thought that we could uh, launch it fairly quickly but because of the legal um 
protection is really that you need in place. Uh, it, it's going to take a little bit more time, but he is still working on that. Cool. Thank you, guys. Could I just pop in there with a the question? Just this relates to um, something that um, Lunkburn kind of brought up earlier on. And it was regards to, um, uh, I forget the term you used for it, but uh, is it like this, the CW20 token that they use to form the basis of the um, the order books? And it kind of occurred to me that there's quite a, there's often quite the conversation between kind of builders on Terra Classic that the burn tax causes um, kind of problems with building and it, it makes it, you know, less attractive. And I wondered whether there's any kind of mileage in maybe looking at kind of developing the technology that he kind of discussed. So there's maybe like a, I don't know, if, if you like a, a tax free zone for applications to come and set up and start building a bit like if you imagine it in the real world you have um free ports so you might have a you know in terms of i mean like shipping that goes around the coast and from one country to another they can go into a port and taxes don't apply there which enables you know the development of kind of trade and this kind of thing and i just wondered whether that was a type of technology that we could incorporate onto terra classic or if it's you know feasible Was that for me, Rexy? You want me to say it again? Crikey. Um, <laughs> no, um, so with your order book, you mentioned that there's a particular token that you use. And by using that token, if you trade in CW20 to CW20, then that doesn't incur the burn tax, but it still uses gas fees. And because the burn tax can be seen as um, something that is a barrier to other projects coming to Terra Classic. I wondered whether there's the ability to build a, what I kind of describe as a tax-free zone in terms of like maybe a, a layer or something within Terra Classic to enable other projects to come here and work and trade and, um, and you know basically operate on terra classic but without incurring that burn tax maybe just incur gas fees but not the burn tax and i was using the analogy that in the real world um different con in countries you have or seafaring countries you often have ports i think there's these in nigeria and i think there's some in the uk as well i'm not 100 percent sure where you can have shipping go from one nation to another and as long as your trade only stops in that port area then you're not subject to taxes from that country and i wondered if we could have some kind of if it was feasible to have something like that on terra classic i was just kind of thinking outside the box absolutely i think i think anything that we can do to attract projects to come on here and if, if that's what's holding everybody or I mean, I keep hearing that, right, from from the different projects. And and so one of the projects that I'm also part of is uh, Backbone Labs. And so they've, you know, they, they've launched on some products on various different chains already. Um, and, and that was that's their big holdup, right, is that um, because of their the way they do their staking and rewards, um, it the, the, t the tax would just eat too much into it. And so the frequent uh transactions that they need in order to support that their burning protocol um yeah it just becomes prohibitive so uh, just from talking with jg over there on backbone labs that that is the hold up so if if we could if we get the community to agree hey we are essentially waiving the tax maybe for this project or that project you know maybe even for a certain amount of time right um just just to get them on board and who knows maybe after you know some time that they've been operating on chain without the tax maybe maybe they realize hey you know what we can afford to pay the tax at that point um so i, I think it is beneficial to explore that um we can always explore and then if it doesn't work out if it's not it's, if it's not a benefit to the community as a whole then we can always walk that back right but uh yeah definitely we do need to think outside of the box and kind of facilitate the onboarding um so uh now the deal there is obviously 
the tax is a <laughs> it's a hot it's a, it's a hot topic, right? And uh, there's quite a quite a lot of uh, discussion for it against it. But uh, yeah, it, it, I think it would be beneficial to at least explore that, even even for a a certain limited amount of time. Yeah, I think um, you can maybe call them like innovation zones or something like that. Uh, where maybe somebody can park up with their project for six months or a year on there, kind of tax free. And if they generate a certain amount of volume, they maybe get to stay there. But if they don't, maybe the, the tax applies. I don't know. I mean, it's it's all kind of just kind of fresh ideas at the minute. But we have to make it simple and easy for projects to come here. And if that means giving them a tax break, just like you do in the real world, um, then that's probably going to pay dividends in the long term because it's not just the building of a project, it's the attracting of all the people that comes with it. And if you attract somebody or the, you know, the, the supporters of that particular or users of that particular project, then they're going to filter across to all the other projects as well, aren't they? And have a bit of a go. If I can offer that. But even if you just use the CW Long Token, would that not create a tax free zone for any project that's using it? Automatically, automatically, without without messing around. around. Absolutely, and um, yeah, utilizing a CW twenty that is that is uh, basically will store the the value of the native lung. I think that's key, right? Um, so uh, that, that's why I think that the CW lung, the way that it is with the hard hard peg to one to one, um, you get that tax break, right? But at the same time, you're assured that no kidding, there's there's native lunk backing it 100 percent, and so uh yeah yeah definitely we um that's something that we can you know i'll talk to jg about it um there, there, there's some obstacles there's some hurdles that have to be figured out right because staking essentially would you be they would be staking native lunk but then operating on cw lunk Uh, Strats just joined. Strats, have you got anything to add to this CW token and burns? Evening, hello. Um, yeah, I think it sounds easier than this, um, especially because if you think about what is uh, one of the hurdles is the audit and code change stuff, um, especially in contracts. And if you imagine that you have to deploy a contract first for even getting a potential whitelisting, because otherwise you don't know the contract addresses, um, that means the project has to first take the risk to deploy to then get the approval of governance to be whitelisted. And even if they would be whitelisted and the whitelisting would be removed after a certain amount of time, they would again have to change their contracts and their interaction with the contracts because then suddenly the tax comes in. And that's, for me per personally, um, I think there's all, also this kind of um, not real stability assurance for the next, whatever, 12 months. If you, if you join, you don't know how the conditions regarding the tax will be then. Um, so even if you would introduce a um, kind of free zone, it's not like a project could join and immediately be in that zone because, as I said, you have to deploy contracts and then they have to be added to that. And that has to go to uh, through governance. And we all know that it's not certain that this would pass even if the discussions prior to it um, had been yeah, promising. So that's difficult. The current whitelisting on chain doesn't even allow that. It would put everything in the same in the same zone as Binance internal whitelisting is. And um, yeah, the the other whitelisting that was um, prepared months ago never got any reviews um, or further attention, I would say. So it was initiated ooh, by the by the burn initiative that asked to implement it because of I think it was uh, CX. I don't know if it was coin in or someone that requested some kind of whitelisting a bit different from Binance. Um, 
which would require some kind of zones with incoming and outcoming rules for for taxing and kind of it's it's all implemented in a in a in a proof of concept but it was never pursued um and that's often the case because there is no central team that just goes ahead with um, decisions and of course on a decentralized chain like uh, LUNC that's not how it should be um so it always needs to be some kind of group effort to push it forward and then for the community and validators to actually give it a drive to implement it and that makes it um that makes it a bit slow in terms if it's something that is not really something to grasp immediately something that you don't see an immediate effect on that everyone can understand immediately what what it would do and what it would cost and what benefit it would bring and regarding the tax i mean i always um am a bit between um, when it comes to contract taxing, because the, t the contract in fact is a wallet. So if you send something to a wallet and the contracts, uh, forward it to another wallet, that's kind of two transactions and similar to if you would send it to one wallet and that wallet would forward it to a second one. On the other hand, normally it's only one transaction that does that. So as most of those asking for a higher tax don't care about d apps at all um yeah the the question would be if you don't remove the taxation from the wasm part of the chain at all that would mean that inside of contracts the tax would no longer be existing um but still if you interact with the contract sending something to it then it still would be taxed, but not if it comes out of a contract and not if it is sent from, from contract to contract. And that would remove all the necessities to adjust the contracts, similar to tax to gas, but um, yeah, but, but also different. That's interesting. It's always um, it's always really useful hearing your view and side of things, um, Strath. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's um, I just wonder whether I mean I'm not the, the technical expert on this. Um, if any of us are, um, <laughs> but I wonder then if if that would incorporate difficulties in the current L1 layer, whether we whether there's mileage in thinking about, I guess another L1 layer. Um, I think there's a proper term for this. I can't kind of think of it off the top of my head. And maybe within that, having a um, kind of maybe some kind of rap version of Lunk or something like that, where effectively, like I say, maybe that's considered more the, if you like, the innovation zone. I'm saying that in kind of inverted com commas. You, you mean like a roll up, I think? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the word I was trying to. Yeah, but but that's, that's always a roll up is always kind of a second chain and you have to get people to adopt that chain and especially on LUNC any kind of doing that would be seen as trying to get people away from LUNC to a side chain or a roll up in my opinion and I'm not sure that would be mm -hmm. the correct way because that would just mean that the um, that the division between the factions of tax and no tax would harden and I don't think it would have any positive impact in the long term. So at some point there there needs to be a route um, for the main chain um, to sort this out in some way or the other. Otherwise, the, yeah, I don't think it would do good. How about if to get onto the, the roll-up, you burnt your lunk and you minted, minted the roll-up one? Yeah, but but still, it um, that's a bit like um, like for example the mint cash uh, situation. I think um, 
when when you saw that they um, yeah you you can burn lung you uh, no you you can burn USTC you get some um, some voucher for whatever and at a later time and it's I don't know what the status of that is but the perception partly was that it's just taking advantage of marketing from from the UNC chain right because the people are so keen on on burning that if you offer them something that drags them to a different different ecosystem because a roll up although it's linked to the main chain it is nonetheless it is a partly separate um ecosystem if you look at for example ethereum and polygon or or similar approaches that try to yeah to mitigate the the fee issues and um, and such stuff so yeah um i'm very reserved um, if that would be something that has a positive effect yeah no i appreciate it so yeah and no, I, I totally agree with you if you um if you just kind of burn tokens and in effect you're burning the market cap aren't you so it would have to be thought out you know a little bit more than that maybe you can you burn one way but you have to buy back the other something like that i don't know but uh anyway they're all all ideas to think about aren't they i like what elbon was suggesting about um like using cw20 token so could like uh, backbone labs could they use cw20 token and, and do it that way I, I, yeah in theory you can but you always have to keep in mind that what what we likely want to achieve is that existing projects on a different chain has an easy as possible option to come over and if you work with native tokens normally and then you suddenly have to switch your mechanics your internal uh, structures to a cw20 token then that might depending on the project um, involve a huge amount of work because yeah <laughs> cw20 tokens work completely different to native tokens and they have some um yeah I, I wouldn't call it limitations but they simply work different it's it's a contract interaction while working with native tokens are direct uh, chain messages so interacting with the on-chain modules and you don't have the option to on-chain stake cw20 tokens or um or do something like that uh so it is an option um, for for certain projects, I guess, but it will not be an option to simplify onboarding process for the majority of projects. Also, you have the same issue as you have with the roll-up side project or whatever. You need to get people <coughs> to be willing to swap their LUNC for that specific token and um, if you if you think about it even if you have a, a cw20 token you need a specific amount of transactions that you do with it uh, until the swap tax to and from the cw20 token is um, yeah is at a break even because uh, let's say you swap 1 million LUNC, then make one or two transactions and have to swap it back because you want to offboard um, to a CX or whatever, then you um, might pay more tax than if you wouldn't have swapped at all. So there is that is something for people that are very active, um, probably making higher frequency trading and similar stuff, but for normal for the normal end user i don't think it's a it's a really um yeah broader use case oh not not saying <laughs> elban not saying that it's uh, the worst idea ever but um i think the problem always is adoption absolutely i understand 
Cool. Uh, whilst we got you here, maybe we can get an update on the uh, tax to gas track call. So I've seen your post and I replied to it saying that I think people are interested, but because of the lack of technical knowledge, myself included, people don't know what to advise or what to comment, maybe. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, I think people really appreciate what yourself, Frag, are doing and working with Orbit Labs now to try and fix it. I, I read the uh, article that you wrote uh, that maybe pay half to genuine labs and then you yourself frag work with orbit labs uh, to do some pull requests and, and take it forward and um, i think community appreciates it. it's just maybe the lack of technical knowledge um, stops them from interacting and giving you more advice or comment on your posts i can i can understand that my issue is a bit that most of these points were raised already when the initial um implementation was in progress and when it was uh, was voted on by uh, genuine labs putting it up um, whether or not to take their current implementation it was voted through so if i would now of um if let's say if i would go the route that i think is best for text to gas and the project overall uh, so l u and c it would not be what was agreed on so that means i would now have to make a proposal to revert the approval and uh, go a different route and the the arguments haven't really changed i i'm not sure um I'm not sure if people either didn't understand the implications prior or they don't care about these specific implications or they were afraid that it is a this or nothing situation. That That's currently a bit of my concern and there is not really many people voicing anything about it and that makes it even more difficult. Um, so so the current... The, so the current um, route is just going forward as it is because as it seems there is no imminent deployment on mainnet anyway just because of the necessary communication with the external parties without them we would run into huge issues probably when we just deploy it on mainnet um, so there is a bit of time to sort these uncertainties out in my opinion although people of course are very impatient because uh, the the concept of is it uh, exists since i don't know oh, nearly a year now and when gl took it on to implement it there was a big yeah, kind of a big hype around it um, that it would solve not only the issue for the apps but also um, remove the issue or the remove the argument of the apps um, that they would not um, support a higher tax and also um, people told me yeah and um, all nodes they stated in their vote on the previous tax raisal that they are waiting for tax to gas to reassess the situation so the expectations around that whole tax to gas is something that is kind of dangerous for me um, because i think it can go in a way um, that expectations are not met or even worse that um, yeah that it kind of fails um, technically, because the apps encounter issues that we didn't have um, that that we didn't didn't have in mind, so barriers wouldn't be removed as expected, or even worse, if wallet would uh, wallets like Kepler wouldn't be willing to make the necessary changes um, to the current tax handling, so we would have issues maybe with the wallet handling and all these things are yeah i i'm not really sure how to handle it the best way currently so the current route still is just to fix the imminent issues that currently exist 
deploy it on testnet and then go from there. So when you say you want uh, people to share their voice, so who do you mean? Is it the validators? You know, we've got Rexy or Lunatic here. Um, who do you, who are you expecting to hear from? Um, yeah, and mainly it's everyone that would be affected by text to guess or wants text to guess to happen. Because uh, the implications that I wrote in the article and on X, they affect nearly everyone that is um, interacting with contracts. And there we are at a further problem. Those people not caring about D apps do not interact with contracts normally. They might do with uh, maybe swapping if they do it on chain, but not with projects uh, on chain. So for them, it doesn't really doesn't really matter what uh, what the effects are. But for Terraport, for Juris, for uh, Base uh, or Elbon um, projects it could make a huge difference depending on what the effects are. So I think everyone that somehow in one way or another is affected by this text to guess should take the time at least to think about what implications it would have for the specific D apps for the development, what would have to be changed. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> what would have to be changed and then we need to have a discussion about if it's feasible to make these adjustments and yeah, have a talk probably with most of the existing dApps and also try to make contact to dApps that we would like to see onboarding. And we, we don't have won anything if those apps say, oh, the way it would work, we still would need to make a lot of adjustments so it doesn't help us um, then then it wouldn't really be worth the efforts and the risk um, of, of things failing so to be honest and I, I don't know if I've said it, uh, this before I think the excitement and the, the wish for having text to guess led to the situation that it was rushed in the beginning the implementation. It was rushed because there would have had to be a lot more of uh, research and discussion prior to starting the implementation. Okay, no, thanks for that, Shra. And I think I probably don't, I probably played my part in that. So maybe I need to apologize because whenever there's something new here, I just be like, oh, tax to gas is coming, bullish for Luna Classics. So probably influences like me uh, needs to calm our optimism and excitement a bit. So maybe Jurish Protocol, uh, Rexy from Terraport, Elbon, um, if you're ready to give feedback now, you can share it now or maybe look into what Strat has said and uh, get back to Strat. I will have to admit, uh, Streff, uh, it took me their light. Um, I, I didn't read your article yet. I have to, I have to admit, I was so caught up in uh, stupid jurors. <laughs> Danke. I was so caught up in, in jurors work, which actually wasn't stupid, but um, it's just a lot. And I didn't have time to, to mess around with long stuff, but like I used to. So um, apologies. I will take a look tomorrow, make time for it, and then... Uh, I mean, for for juries, it it will not be that um, that much of a change because you will have to develop on Terra Classic anyway. So if it's this way or the other, it doesn't make a big difference for you currently, as you have not deployed yet. But I think um, for other projects that already have, even even for I think Garuda is not here, but their marketplace Miata. Um, and all all those things it might have implications on. So yeah, that that are probably the main targets currently for the technical um, side of it. And regarding the rest, um, the community and traders and people like you, Rocco, um, it is the the payment side of things, the the gas fee income for the chain. And the way tax is paid, especially, for example, on P2P markets, um, 
that are mostly those topics that affect the everyday user. Right, Strath. I think uh, in the article you mentioned there was going to be a reduction in uh, in fees, right? Uh, down to like not, not, in, the not in the Oracle. No. No, no, it, it would be uh, so with the current implementation, I can explain that shortly again. So normally on Cosmos chains, um, you make a guess estimation. That means the, uh, the D app or whatever asks the chain, okay, how much gas do I need to pay for this transaction? And then you add some kind of security buffer. So you assure your transaction does not fail. This could be one time, uh, 1.5 times, two times, th three times the amount. And normally on Cosmos chains, no matter what you send, it is taken. So if you send three times the fees, that means, okay, you are willing to pay three times the fees, then you pay three times the fees. <coughs> and with the new current approved text to gas implementation, this would change and only what you really use would be deducted. And when I made um, some backtesting on two separate days with around uh, 10,000 blocks each, it was a reduction by 70 to 80 percent because nearly every client uses a multiplier for the gas, so some higher, some lower. And um, the gas fee is unlike the tax is mostly depending on the volume and that means the higher the volume the more we would um yeah we would see this impact later um because you would have to have uh, four times the volume to get back to the same gas fee amount um, that we are now at um but also, to be fair, currently, with the low volume we have, this gas fee is only approximately 5% or 7% of the overall rewards that we have. So it's not that impactful right now. But the more volume we have, the higher the percentage of the gas rewards compared to the Oracle um, become. And then also the higher this effect would be. And as we have quite cheap gas fees, not the cheapest, but quite cheap, I would not really um, see it as beneficial to reduce the income from it. And the alternative would only be to increase the gas prices. But as we all know that gas is very unequally distributed in usage between executions of contracts of certain kind with it, between sending coins, that would have a different effect. It would uh, again go mostly towards those using contracts, um, which would not really be fair, I think. I'm always too technical. After I speak, everyone is silent. That's annoying. No, uh, uh, look, uh, we 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 need some time, the uh, honored one, to like uh, decipher whatever you're saying because yeah, that that's my issue. I try to speak <laughs> quite um, quite an easy language, but I always get uh, dragged uh, um, dragged into the the technical terms, and uh, it's need, hard. You need to take into account that ninety six to ninety nine percent of the lung community is pretty retarded including myself so um uh even though you might be even though you might be like um um explaining in a very in a very very basic way we did we do really need some time you know okay let me let me try a very very simplified thing that leaves out a lot of a okay. lot of stuff so currently you get rewards from two places the volume rewards, which is the gas, and the Oracle rewards, which is what was generated in the crash and is now depleted from the Oracle pool. So those are the two pots. And the volume pot is currently due to the low volume only around 5% of what you get. The rest comes from what we still have in the Oracle. So 
the higher the volume goes, because the Oracle distribution does not change, the higher the volume goes, the higher the percentage of the, immun uh, the immediate gas fee rewards becomes. Can I, I just think... add something there, Straff? Yeah. You're, you're talking about rewards to people that are staking, aren't you? Yes. But also you have to imagine 50% of all those rewards, block fees, go to the community pool. So it affects staking rewards, but also the community pool. Okay, so let's so imagine... Could you explain that again, too? Yeah. So how, how does it interact with the community pool? Yeah, um, from all the gas fees that are generated on chain through transactions, 50% go to the staking rewards and 50% go to this community pool. So and now imagine the volume skyrockets and gets a 10x. Then this share of the rewards would no longer be 5% of what you receive. It would be higher because the Oracle doesn't change. It always... Um, depletes and gets a bit lower, but it doesn't change due to volume. And that means the impact, if gas fees are generally lower that the chain uh, generates by, for example, 60% lower, the effect is bigger, the higher the volume is. So if you have a volume of 1K and get 60% um, less, then you still get 400 when the volume is 1 million, then you can imagine you lo lose 600,000 of, of those fees due to the reduction um, that is caused by the changed um, implementation of how gas is paid. Um, honored one. So basically, um, if there's more volume on chain with the tax to gas, as always, um, uh, the the uh, we we are going to uh, have a a a much healthier oracle pool as a whole. So uh, that's not only text to guess. It's overall you overall. have yeah yeah. If the higher the volume gets, the less relying we are on the oracle. So we could even reduce the oracle payout if the volume would be high. We could say okay, the oracle shall only distribute fifty percent of what it does now. But currently, it's over 90% of all the rewards. So if you would cut the Oracle down to zero, our APR would not be at nine, it would be at well, below one. Um, uh, another, another question. So um, uh, with the tax to gas, um, uh, like the the whole, I don't remember how much the gas is on loan right now. I th I think it's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. If you correct me if I'm wrong. So all that tax is going to go into gas basically, and it's going to get like, um, it's going to be gas as a whole. No, 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 no. Um, it is handled as gas for the client. That means when you make it transaction simulation so estimating the gas you get it converted to gas that is true and if you send it you also send simply send higher fees um, according to the higher gas which includes the tax but internally it is then separated to the gas part and the tax part and the tax part would still be handled exactly the same way um, as it is now understood understood um but um uh, since we have this low low we have a very low volume in like on chain and it's been a hassle since the inception of lunk as a whole since uh, doc one created phoenix five um why don't why don't we uh as a community or at least try try to um i don't know if it's the time to use experiments on the L1 as a whole, but um, would there be a possibility to actually uh, lower the tax or even like uh, like kill it as a whole? The option always is there. If you if you would right now, if you would right now, even without any programming on chain, 
would simply reduce the tax to 0%. Then also contract adjustments and DAP adjustments and something like that would not be necessary anymore to deploy on Classic. But there we are back in, uh, in the stability discussion because the tax could be raised back at any time and everyone that would have deployed at that time relying on the fact that no adjustments are necessary, that there is a 0% tax, would get wrecked immediately because contracts that cannot deal with the tax would immediately stop working unless there is tax together in place, of course, because then the contract sh wouldn't have to care about it. But without tax to gas, as soon as there is something deployed relying on a 0% tax, as soon as it's changed back to something higher, it would stop, it would stop working mostly. So basically, uh, uh, 101, we need to um, organize around each other. So tax to gas that gets implemented uh, as soon as possible, as far as long and uh, as far as long is concerned. No, th th that's the issue. That that's exactly the issue that has to be discussed. If we are willing to take the downsides of implementing tax to gas to get the benefits of it, and if those benefits are worth it, and for to know that you have to actually speak with people that could potentially deploy on Classic and are not right now. Because if they say, oh, we would still need to make adjustments because of this or that, which is um, not possible to handle by tax to gas, uh, then possibly the downsides would outweigh the benefits. So basically we're stuck, we are stuck in a loophole. No, we need people that have connections to, for example, other Cosmos chains that no project that uh, maybe are friends or colleagues with other projects and can ask them if, even if they don't really plan to deploy on Classic, ask them um, if um, or, or what the hindrance would be to deploy on Classic and if text to guess would solve it. I know that needs some kind of technical uh, terms and it wouldn't help if a community member without technical knowledge would simply ask ask one of the DApp because um, there would be missing some um, explanations potentially. Um, so it needs people that have their own projects. It would maybe need people that are experienced in Terra Classic and have the connections to those projects or at least make the connections to those projects and um, I can say openly I'm not the guy that can do that because I do not have those connections and also it would be more than I could handle also time-wise. Um, after that, um, what, uh, okay, okay, okay. I might have or anybody in this panel or anybody in the listeners panel might have connections and etc. But um, from a code uh, point of view, if I am a owner of a decentralized application somewhere, I, I, I'm taking injective. How hard is for me and my team and the dev development team to deploy our DAP in Columbus? Currently, as soon as you deal with native tokens, you have to change your contracts. If they are audited, you likely need to um, partly or fully reaudit them is, um, when it comes to the token interactions. And for the UI, you will have to implement the tax handling. Um, with text to gas it is a bit more fine-grained of what you might need to do and might not need to do. What I just recently discovered, for example, is um, the issue that we solved with Station Mobile, if you remember. The yeah. swap page was not working, the send page was not working. And this was because they don't really care how much you 
want to send or swap. They just tell the chain, I want to send, or they tell the chain, I want to swap. And that leads to the fact that text to gas would not know how much gas would be due. Well, if, if station sends you, okay, I want to make a send, but just always sends one U Luna, because that is what it does, then the chain could not say, okay, this costs one million gas, because it doesn't know how much you want to send. And at that point, station mobile would simply fail to work. Even with text to guess, because text to guess relies on the correct amount of LUNC that is involved in that transaction. And I, I, I didn't know that D apps do that kind of stuff because I personally, as soon as the user changes the amount in the interaction with contracts, I do a new simulation. And I ask the chain, okay, how much gas is it um, if I want to do this transaction with amount X? But Kepler, they don't care. They make one simulation. Station Mobile, they don't care for sense. They do one simulation. For swapping, they do one simulation, no matter the amount that you put in. So all these would stop working without change in their code base with text to gas. Understood. Under, uh, I, I got you, you gave me a very good base of knowledge around text to guess with what you just said. And um, we do have a lack of manpower as far as as LUNC is concerned. Yes, but uh, <laughs> what I just, just recently, um, I'm, maybe it was today, said to someone who said um, we need more developers. Kind of true. But on the other hand, we don't have a roadmap. We don't have a plan forward. Why do we need developers in a huge number? If we have one team like, for example, Orbit Labs, if they manage to to um, complete their work to the community's agreement and they are willing to do further work, as long as we don't have a roadmap, as long as we don't have a wish list of things that are really important to the chain, um, yeah, yeah. It would just be people idling or doing uh, not really important stuff. Um, the, I had I had an idea, and I talked with Frag about this idea. It was at least last year, and um, um, uh, well, wouldn't wouldn't we uh, be able to use our community pool to get into contact um, with different teams in the cosmos uh, that can actually uh, help us in a L1 spectrum, but also uh, uh, help us incentivize a roadmap and etc. cetera. But um, uh, as far as I remember, because we, we left that because uh, LUNC had bigger problems at the time. And um, would there be a time actually so we can get into contact with the uh, creators of if i can say injective and probably they help us but, create something. yeah the the thing is they also don't know what what the creators what the developers what the community on this chain want um there is no uh, currently there's still no unified opinion of um, what the chain main focus should be um, we need the apps, of course, some um, or many are saying without the repack at some point, this chain will get to nowhere. So you, you, you still, even if you would have a team of advisors from, from experienced Cosmos people, you would still need to have some kind of understanding of what the of what the chain's consensus is, um, what should be achieved. Yeah, yeah, actually, th this was a problem since the Terra Rebels time, and um, we will never have a unified opinion. And th that is a that is a larger than the world problem, in my experience. And um, that's a decentralization problem. Yeah, exactly. But um, 
there, there are so many issues uh, that still linger in LUNC that I, I just gave up, to be honest. Like last year in December or at least November, I just gave up on everything around here. And well, I got back in LUNC or actually in URIS, in X Rakoff, um, just because of uh, 69 here. And um, I, I can understand that. I mean, all all the projects I am somehow affiliated with have to do with um, with DApp and NFT stuff. And when I look at the interest of people compared in from mid 22, for example, or end 22 to now, we have, um, I would say, not 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 even not even 10% um, of interactions or interest that was um, was there previously. And that makes that is all also that's again, kind of a chicken egg, egg problem, because it makes funding harder for the game projects or for the other projects. And without those, it makes it harder to advertise um, to the outside with various use cases, not only with DeFi or specific um, specific projects, but um, give a broader, um, yeah, broader choice for the for the people. And that makes it, uh, it it's always this chicken egg, where, where do we start? Where where do we actually start? Um, without D apps without projects? Um, it's kind of um, a bit wasted money to advertise in big scope. But on the other hand, without people, there are not really sustainable projects. So well, I, I um, actually uh, I got into contact with a with a decentralized exchange in uh, in Injective, and uh, the only question that, that they were just asking me nonstop for at least the fifteen minutes that um, I got I got into a phone call with them, and then they said that what what is the benefit for me? to come and deploy my decentralized exchange in Terra Classic. And that was the only question that they, I, I didn't know what to say because uh, they, they, they knew how, they, they know how Terra Ter Luna Classic is working with the tags and et cetera. And they were like, there is no point in me or even in, in my developers to start coding our exchange to be deployed in Terra Luna Classic because we, there are many issues. We, we the, I, I think, I don't know. I, I need to be, do a little bit of research, but I think that the user base in Terra Classic is just diminishing day by day because the only thing that we're providing people is nothing at the moment. I know, I know Mayera. Uh, I, I, uh, I think that uh, I remember for the the Garuda whole ecosystem, it's Elban here, which uh, I, I know very well, and I'm a big holder of uh, Elbon, of Base. But other than that, my my brother, the, we 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 do lack uh, involvement. We do lack uh, lack uh, brotherhood, if I can say it uh, as a as a brotherhood concept for Terra Luna Classic. We're just here pointing fingers. we or, or just blame Frag about it. I, I I see it a bit, a bit more nuanced, or how it is said in in English. I don't know. All this non-native speaking is somehow a bit difficult in the technical space. Um, it is. Mm, <laughs> I could complain the whole day about a lack of interest or or support of projects, probably. Um, but actually, I don't know what the actual interest of the existing user base is apart from apart from staking and DeFi. I don't know it. Um, that That's not really something I am able 
to to research and i am also not that <clears throat> that experienced in in user base analytics and all those stuff that you might be able to do i just can see how many active wallets there are i think it's uh, let, let me check again i um i think it's three and a half thousand active wallets in one day and 12,000 distinct wallets in a week. And uh, so, if, you, if you have the number, how many in a month? Uh, wait a second, um, around 33,000 distinct wallets. Uh, considerable, it is very considerable. Yeah, but, but you don't know what they do. You would have to analyze what are those movements? What are they doing? Yeah. Are they just moving from one exchange to another to make arbitrage? Are they using DEXs? Are they interacting with, with whatever projects? So you would have to make some kind of analysis um, even to see what kind of user base is lacking, what kind of user base is there and could be targeted. It is something that would be necessary for someone with uh, the knowledge and the time to take that on if it is desirable to get those information. And then I'm not sure if that would be useful either because in, in crypto, what I found is there's few people that make like a revolutionary something new that just catches on, whether it's NFT or you know DeFi yeah. with Aave, and it's quite. I don't think the user base knows what what it is. Um, I think good a good um, quote from Steve Jobs is they don't know what they want. Is for us like the developers are the, the first adopters to create something new, and I don't know what it is. If I knew it, I'd be you know a lot richer. I could create something completely new. The other thing I've seen crypto do is just copy. Um, Tron does it really well, or you could say it does it bad. Whenever they see something do well, they just come and fork it or just you know, straight up copy. Um, I guess you could say what we are trying to do now, I don't want to say Jewish is copying, because that would be you know, uh, you know, belittling what Lunatic is doing. He's got a lot bigger plan, and um, the borrowing protocol is just one of the things. But you know, we're we're learning from Ave, the lending borrowing protocol and anchor protocol, um, NFTs. You know, Rex's Terraport, same as like a Dex. Um, so you could learn from them or trying to do this meme stuff from Solana, and and see if it catches on. Unless someone has a brilliant idea that no one's thought about and it just catches on. But I don't know. I don't think looking at user base is going to give us those insights. Yeah, but aren't we back again at that point where it comes to funding? you if if you yeah. if you want to do something really big and innovative like like for example that has not been done um you have st you still f mm, let's say you build a really big d app and you want to give LUNC a chance as the first adopter um, you still would have to make special special implementation and would not be able to just deploy it one, um, one on one. So the same version on another chain if you see that it doesn't work on LUNC. So likely you would think twice and say, okay, then I do an implementation that is compatible with more different chains than just with LUNC. And yeah, that, that's part of the issue, I think, um, that we have these barriers that we still have. And I acknowledge that I don't contribute to bettering that a lack of documentation for developers, especially, but also for end users. Always the old classic docs from Terramani, which even might be shut down um, when they give up their domain or whatever they do in end of October. So we have barriers on the technical side. We have barriers on the documentation side. We have barriers in terms of stability overall on, on chain regarding decisions. That is something that needs to be addressed. Every single point of it. I agree with that strat. Gokapella, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just, I just wanted to. Um, there have been very few people to follow in 
in Carolina Classic as a whole, and I've never. Uh, I, it's been ver a very weird journey this past two years, and soon it's gonna be, soon it's gonna be three, and um, the lack, the lack of leadership, and um, people giving up nonstop. It's um, let's say uh, distressful at the very least but we, we should just keep on going and um i think that yuris is doing um i think personally what everybody should be doing internal on a classic and i hope that um we give an ex a good example as albon has done which i'm always going to give them a very 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 big shout out and uh, Rex is too, and the Terraport team for uh, helping us along the way. And um, we really need to work together and uh, uh, just keep on keep on grinding, man. That's the whole thing here. And I, I, I've read so many comments left and right that Yuris, Yuris is doing a very good job. And actually, um, we still don't know if we are doing a good job, but we are trying our best. So we give the end product uh, to the user base in the best way possible. And we maintain the same grind that we have right now. And we just keep on grinding and just keep on doing our best and find new heights. And that's the whole idea about it. And I really want to thank you, Strath. You're one of the few people that I've followed since, I don't know, since the very beginning of Lunk. And a very big shout out to you too. Yeah, and same from myself as well. Good to speak to you, Shra. I've read a lot and followed what, a lot of your posts. So good to have you on here. Maybe we can have you on here again. And hopefully our non-technical brains, you don't get too upset um, speaking to us. But I do appreciate your and uh, Frag's input. Uh, one question from me, one last question from myself to Frag and then um, Frag, Strat, and then uh, Jewish can finish off the spaces. So, you know, you've mentioned a lot of issues. Have you got any suggestions of what we can do? Because in a, maybe I'm being a bit pessimistic. So I think unless things get worse, we're just going to sort of prodigal, prodigal along with the L2s like Elbon, you know, building stuff, Rexy, Terraport, and, you know, Jewish, we can make decisions and make an impact. But for an L1, for LUNC, I don't see any big changes in the near future unless things get really bad. There's a burning platform, you know, what made Terraport succeed. Everyone got together um, with staking and, and um, making governance and all that good stuff. What are your few suggestions or maybe like thoughts you think that could help LUNC? I can't hear you, Strat, if you're speaking. Yeah, we don't hear you, Strat. Uh, sorry, I think my connection rocked. I don't know. I, he I heard nothing. We can hear you now. Did you hear my question, Strat? Oh, Strat's ragging. Okay, uh, Jewish, you yeah. might have to go finish up the spaces. It rubbed for me earlier as well, um, so maybe it's rugging for Strat. Okay, he's rejoined. Let's try again, and then we'll let Lunatic. Can you hear us, Strat? It kills the local network connection, and I have to reconnect it, and uh, that happened. I heard nothing. <laughs> okay, so my question was that... Uh, Maybe I'm being a bit pessimistic, but I don't see a big change to happen on the L1. L2s, you know, l Juris, Juris, Terraport, yourself, you know, you can take the leadership and, and make changes. But on the L1, when you need the whole, you know, different wider teams, it's you know, Diamond Hand, Happy Kenta Crypto, myself, all knows there's so many different uh, fragments of this community. Bringing everyone together is difficult. And I don't see it, anything change unless, you know, it gets really bad and there's like a burning platform and, you know, like what happened with Terrebles. I don't see everyone getting back behind one vision, one leader and, and pr making changes. Um, but just to think outside the box, and I know you're a lot more technical, what would be your one or two suggestions that we can do to 
uh, help Luna Classic be in the best position for the next bull market? Um, actually, with um, with TFL winding down, with finally all remaining connections to the former owners of um, of Terra Classic, I would think if if there is a chance to revive this to a point where it goes beyond what it's currently and what it was maybe a year ago, we will probably need to take some risks um, that involves um, something I discussed with HC in, in, this, in the last uh, space, I think, that we need to think about really bad stuff like cutting USTC rewards from, from the Oracle, like burning it from there to not getting more USTC in circulation, to burn what we have in CP from the USTC. So this would risk, for example, half, nearly half of the APR and would really even more than now make validators run at a loss. But what I said back then is, um, Imagine you have the chance to get a, get somewhere in six months or 12 months at a cost of 50% uh, less income or payment during that time. It might still be more beneficial than not doing it and running at the same level as now for two or three further years. So at some point, we as a chain need to make the decision if we want to try slowly and <laughs> also painfully like we are doing currently sometimes um, or if you want to try to make more drastic drastic moves um, which probably would kick out um, or no make some people leave that do not agree with such a route um, but at the end, it's always a consensus decision. But I think there need to be discussions made that can be can be painful. Okay, thanks for that. But I think validators probably won't vote that through. <laughs> mm, I think this is uh, if if I may uh, add something to this. Um, I think one of the, the historic problems we have. And I think validators is is the key to this is that I think the purpose of the chain in many people's eyes is to provide re validators with rewards and stakers with rewards. And I think that is something that ultimately will end in as going nowhere because ultimately it, the rewards will just reduce and reduce until it's not viable and everybody will just leave apart from those hardcore, you know, um, missionaries, I suppose you might say. Um, Maybe there's some opportunity here where rather than us trying to change Terra Classic or the culture of Terra Classic to fit one particular narrative. And I don't think we'll ever get everybody to agree because everybody's entitled to their own opinions and everybody's opinion is very important to them. Maybe if we somehow create opportunities for them to be to have um different kind of narratives and use cases that can run alongside each other. As we kind of said earlier on, you, know, you might have a, uh, you know, a roll up on the chain for applications. You might have a roll up on the chain for people that, you know, not quite sure how this will work, but for, for burning or, or whatever it may be. And then you can use the mother chain if you like. Um, but then you can use the, you know, the, uh, um, you know, the, the daughter kind of chain, um, the children kind of chains, if you like, uh, for other things. Um, but I don't think we're ever going to reach a consensus unless things get so bad that there is absolutely zero choice. Um, but I just think, like I say, that unfortunately, I think while you've got people and validators competing for voting power, I don't think we're going to get validators which are some of the biggest influencers 
and I, I don't mean that in terms of um, uh, um, in terms of pure influences, if you like. But you know, they're the people that got the most impact in terms of the community of Terra Classic. Until voting power isn't the main issue, I don't think we're going to get them supporting utility in the other aspects of the chain. The question for me is: Let's say let let's play that mind game. You would really go the drastic route. You would burn all the USTC in the Oracle. You would burn all the USTC in the CP. The APR would go down to let's say four to five percent. What would happen? How many validators would leave? How many stakers would leave? Of course, the more stakers leave, the higher the APR would go again, because it's depending on the overall staked. Um, but who would leave? Who would stay? Um, speaking in terms of all nodes, for example, probably if they would agree, we would um, need to find an agreement in terms of infrastructure payment or similar, because I guess without yeah without some kind of business perspective um, on chain it would be quite quite difficult to simply continue running those and think about the worst consequences it could have um, and think if it's worth the risk i guess because as you said roll-ups for me Personally, a roll-up is not much different to just another chain connected by IBC. Um, it's a bit more, uh, yeah, it's a bit different. But why should someone use a roll-up of Luna Classic when he can use Atom or whatever, which might be connected by IBC? It's it's not that much different. I um, think while I think while we've still got it. I think the attraction might be that in terms of the wider Terra Classic community, a role could be seen as within that community and still have that um, that custom base. But as the custom base and the community starts to get smaller and smaller, as I think unfortunately it is doing, then even the attraction of that isn't quite so attractive. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, Curious Lunacy, you had your hand up. We'll give you the last comment or last question. Mm, okay, so uh, I actually wanted to say something else, but uh, I want to quickly comment on what Streff and Rexy were talking about. Um, I have, <laughs> Rexy knows uh, that I was in the in the L1 chat, uh, and there I had like this uh, hardcore opinion that Streff referred to. Um, my opinion personally is um, burn the funds. Uh, lower the APR to five six percent or whatever, because in my opinion the the APR shouldn't be this high anyways. Because um, you know we like to me I'm very like black and white with these things. And if we are going to uh, burn protocol funds and do everything we can to reduce USTC supply, then we shouldn't be rewarding or diluting supply using USTC. And uh, if rewards go down to five six percent, it's uh, between like other chains have five to six percent. It's not that Luna would become completely un uncompetitive. Um, and to be honest, like all the small guys, like if USDC rewards attracts them, um, what will happen? They they all dump. I dump my rewards. I will be quite honest with you guys. I dump them, like probably ninety nine percent of the community does. Uh, and who's going to accumulate whales? And then it just makes it harder for us to repack. So in my opinion. Um, even if it has negative effects, even if it does look bad, it will just be temporarily. Um, and like, I don't know if, if, in my opinion, if, if somebody says, yeah, but it makes it harder for validators to, to be sustainable, then I would argue and say like, this is just an argument why to get rid of the, of the USDC, because it literally means that the validators are dumping USDC when they receive it, and probably also the delegators too. That's just my opinion. Um, and Streff, um, uh, maybe Rob, no, uh, I, I, 
I totally agree um, because if you say the community wants to burn, if the community says um, we agree to burn protocol funds and um, we want to lower the supply, then they also need to go the step further and say we burn what we would get as, as uh, rewards in USDC because otherwise it's kind of, yeah. It, I would I say that you don't want to say stuff. I would say it's hypocritical. If yeah, yeah. Are... No, I, I, I would have said it. I just can't, couldn't remember the word. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So if if someone would really propose to burn the Oracle USTC side of things and also burn the CP USTC side of things, I would agree. I I, I think. We would need to have talks, for example, with all nodes, because they probably also might dump USDC. I have no idea, but they, yeah, they would have the highest immediate effect, at least on on chain, if we would um, upset that <laughs> them that much that they uh, don't care anymore. Um, but apart from that. I think there's not much reasoning against doing such a thing. Yeah, we definitely should have a plan. Like it's not something that we should just decide on like without having some sort of plan or whatever. Like for example, if we have a repack plan and say like, okay guys, if we fund, you know, we're going to burn this stuff, it will hurt a little bit uh, in the beginning, but look, uh, Terra Classic will be much more attractive. You have new people coming in and then it's, it's totally different story. But if we just go burn right. stuff, yeah, I, I mean, I, I need to say it here right now because it sometimes sounds like those ideas come come always come if they come from from uh, this this direction it always comes from me, but uh, actually it was brought up by HC in the last space um, and. Um, so I think he also, even if he is um, earning uh, good rewards probably from from that side he would in my opinion totally agree to to go that route and i hope that others and not looking up to the to heaven um would agree to okay I so think, i think he was going to burn that and i think you've alluded to this there needs to be sound reasoning as to why you do that and what how what that actually enables us to do um because until you've got some kind of repeg plan for ustc or peg it at a cent or whatever it may be we're just burning for the sake of burning i would argue rexy we're doing that already with the protocol fund so we have we we, we stepped you know what I mean? Like we opened the box of Pandora anyways, and now if we don't burn the CP and OP, it's like, then all the people affected, they would look at Hypocritical. Yeah, Is there a plan for someone to put a proposal up to, to do this? Do you guys know? Or not yet. Can you not share it here? Okay. Uh, as as um, as Ellis said, uh, you would need to have some discussions. You would have, an, 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 you would need a viable plan, an explanation of why and possible benefits, but also possible risks, and um, lay that out and um, reason about it. Guys, if you're okay, uh, I think Rocco wants to enter space, and I wanted to say something totally different from this. Um, uh, is that fine with you? Rocco? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to, yeah, we can do a thank you to Strat later, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, first I'm going to do a thank you to somebody else. Uh, I want to say thanks to Rexy and also to uh, please relay this to, to Space Monkey and uh, Mancy and the others in the Terraport team. Uh, today I had a little bit of uh, personal meltdown, let's call it like this. Uh, and I want to apologize publicly to the Terraport team um who well, i went at pretty <laughs> rough roughly um yeah sometimes this stuff happens it shouldn't happen uh, but i will say it in public uh, i apologize to terraport team for being a little bit unfair to them uh, i was pretty frust frustrated with some stuff going on but it's uh, it didn't uh, there was no reason to 
go at them like the way I did. Uh, no reason to go at Rexy in, in WhatsApp chat the way I did. Uh, so apologies, Rexy. Um, and I'm happy that uh, Space Monkey actually replied to me in DMs the way he did and called me down and uh, was able to resolve everything. Uh, so I'm looking forward to keep working with them. Um, and in future, maybe even have like extended partnerships and whatever. So uh, again, apologies, Rexy and Terraport team. Um, I'm happy that you got their support all the time. Um, and when I do mistakes, I want to also apologize for them and also in public. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's it for me. Maybe Rocco, you can say thanks to Streff then. Uh, and then yeah, no. wrap it up. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in, uh, Rexy as well. And yeah, thanks, Strat. It'd be good that if we can have you at least once a month, you and Frag here, because your technical knowledge is, is helpful for the community and educating the community as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in. We do this every Sunday. Uh, we'll speak to you next Sunday. Thank you everyone for, for listening and uh, have a good week next week. Goodbye all. Goodbye.